Thank you so much for watching Landom Sea Goes There. Please subscribe and hit the like button and the bell notification button. Cimarron is a 1960 American epic western film that was based on the Edna Ferber novel Cimarron. The movie stars Glenn Ford and Maria Schell and was directed by Anthony Mann. He also got some help from Charles Waters, although Waters is not credited on screen for his work. The source novel was previously adapted as a film in 1931. That version won three Academy Awards. Cimarron was the first of three epics, along with El Cid and The Fall of the Roman Empire, that Anthony Mann directed. And despite high production cost and an experienced cast of Western veterans, stage actors, and future stars, the film was released with little fanfare. The production has boatloads of people in it, names you're familiar with and others that you're not. But rarely do you see so many people used in a production. The storyline goes that Sabra Kravitz joins her new husband, lawyer Yancey Cimarron Kravitz, during the Oklahoma land rush of 1889. They encounter Yancey's old friend, William the Kid Hardy, and his buddies Wes Jennings and Hoss Berry. On the trail, Yancey helps Tom and Sarah Wyatt and their eight children, taking them aboard their wagons. It really does seem to Sabra that her husband knows everyone in Oklahoma. A small crowd cheers Bob Yontas and his henchman Millis when they attack an Indian family. And Yancey goes on to join his friend Sam Pegler, editor of the Oklahoma Wigwam newspaper, in resisting Yontas. Yontas warns Pegler against using the paper for his crusading as he had done in Texas, and Sabre is angry that Yancey risked his life for an Indian, but she helps the others, including peddler Saul Levy and printer Jesse Rickey, in riding the Indian's overturned wagon. Sam and his wife Mavis reveal more about Yancey's past as a gambler, cowboy, gunman, and lawyer. Eventually, 50,000 settlers race across the prairie to claim land. Tom falls, and Sarah claims a dry, worthless patch. Pegler gets trampled to death, and Dixie beats Yancey to the land that he wanted. So he ends up asking Jesse to stay to help him run the paper. The new town of Osage consists of tents and half-built storefronts. Four years later, Osage is thriving. Tom has built an oil drilling apparatus, but he is a laughing stock. Wes, Haas, and the kid, wanted outlaws, try to rob a train, but are all killed soon afterward. When Yancey destroys the $1,000 reward check, Sabra is furious because he just does not consider their son's security. Yancey then leaves to be part of the Cherokee Strip, but Sabra refuses to join him. Years later, he returns, and Sabra and their son forgive him. Tom finally strikes oil, but Yancey is disgusted to learn that Tom bought the rights to the oil found on Indian land. Ten years later, on the occasion of the Oklahoma Wigwam's 25th anniversary, the United States' entry into World War I is announced. Later, Sabra hears that Yancey has been killed in the war. Now, like I said earlier, the list of known actors in this epic film is unbelievable. Initially, I said there was Glenn Ford, Maria Schell, but there's Ann Baxter, Arthur O'Connell, Russ Tamblin, Mercedes McCambridge, Vic Morrow, Robert Keith, Harry Morgan, Edgar Buchanan, Royal Dano, L.Q. Jones, and the list goes on and on. And these are credited actors. There's probably 75 that are not credited. During February of 1941, MGM bought the remake rights 
to Cimarron from RKO for around $100,000. In 1947, they announced an operetta version starring Catherine Grayson that would be produced by Arthur Freed, but this never came about. In October of 1959, Arnold Schulman was signed to write the screenplay, and in his script, he introduced some completely different characters that weren't in the original production. Eventually, Anthony Mann was named as the director. He was known primarily for the critically acclaimed The Glenn Miller Story from 1954 and Men in War from 1957, but he had also previously directed eight westerns. Disagreements with the producer of this film, Edward Granger, caused Mann to leave the project halfway through the filming. You see, he had wanted to film everything entirely on location, but Granger wanted a majority of the scenes instead to be filmed in studio. That's when director Charles Waters finished the film but received no screen credit for it. There is a truly excellent special effects sequence when Glenn Ford runs across the street outside his office to rescue his son from a galloping horse. The proximity of Ford and the little boy to the horse on close inspection reveals a masterful traveling mat, which can only be discerned by the fact that the horse's shadow doesn't pass over Ford and the boy and for the very last frames, does not seem to touch the ground as it runs by the camera. The fictional town of Osage was built on three sound stages. It comprised 11 acres of land at the MGM lot, the biggest western town in the studio's history. The failure of this movie, combined with the disastrous The Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse from 1962, created a serious setback in Glenn Ford's run as a major box office star. But then he experienced a huge rebound in the supporting role of Pa Kent from Superman in 1978. During this production, he and Maria Schell became extremely close and had a torrid love affair during the whole production of this film. In 1981, Shell gave Ford a dachshund puppy that she had, named Bismarck. This dog became his favorite and constant source of comfort, reminding him of the great times they had filming the movie. It went on to give him comfort in his later years when he became ill and bedridden. After the dog passed away, he had it cremated, and he requested that its ashes be buried with him upon his death, which is what was done when Ford died in 2006. Go back and take a look at this often forgotten Western. I think you might enjoy it. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.